<coughs> Great, off to a fantastic start. Hello, my makeup friends. It has been a minute and a half. It's been over a month since I sat down to film. And in fact, I didn't actually get down into this room until just a few days ago. So we've got a lot to update on. My kids have their meet the teacher night tonight. So I figured I would hobble my way down here and at least make an attempt so I don't look like a literal goblin showing up to meet their teachers. So I figured this was a good enough time to just play with some makeup, throw it on my face. And while I'm doing that, just chat with you guys about what has been going on because there's been a lot. So let's just dive into it. I'm not going to give like full reviews as we go through, but I'll at least show you what we're going to start with. This is the newest item that I've picked up. I really haven't done much makeup shopping at all in the last, definitely in the last month, but like two months, I really haven't bought anything. This one is from Maybelline. It's the Instant Age Rewind Perfector 4-in-1 Glow Makeup, which I have in the shade 01 Light. It's not necessarily new. It's new-ish, but it's new to me. And frankly, after going a month without wearing any makeup, this is kind of my speed. Just a little bit to even things out, but not like full coverage by any stretch. So the only thing I don't like is the applicator. We'll get past it. Okay, so... <laughs> Let's back up to the end of August. I can't remember if I mentioned it on this channel. If you're not aware, I have two channels. This one devoted mostly to makeup. The other one devoted to my pursuit of health called, appropriately enough, finding health. Uh, so, ew, why are you so wet? Ugh. Ugh. Okay, I don't like this applicator. I don't. Anyways, um, that's distracting. <laughs> I don't like that at all. Mm. Can I just like rip that thing off? Does anybody like, can I just do that? Cause it's disturbing. I don't, I don't like it. Anyways, I may have mentioned it on my other channel. In fact, I know that I did. I don't remember if I mentioned it on this one or not, but towards the end of August, I entered into my first ever actual triathlon. At the beginning of August, I had done a swim bike event and just omitted the run. But then after seeing how many people took walking breaks during the run at that event, I was like, okay, we can throw the run in. I can do a full triathlon and then I'm going to feel very accomplished and proud of myself, even if I walk the majority of the run because I have a hip injury. I'm waiting on a um, ultrasound for it. It's still undiagnosed, but the suspicion is that there is a tear in one of the um, ligaments in there. So running makes it a little angry. So anyways, I entered into a sprint distance triathlon. So that is, what was it? A 750 meter swim, 20 kilometer bike ride and a 5k run. And honestly, my goal was just to finish, hoping to finish not dead last, but really it was just challenge myself, and finish it. And I did. And I didn't come in dead last. Came pretty close. I think I only beat out like five or six people. But that's okay. The fact of the matter is, is that I finished it. And what's kind of cool is they show you um, your splits for each different segment. So they'll tell you how long you were swimming, how long you spent in transition, how long you were on the bike, again, transition, and then the run. And my swim, I was actually like top half of my category that went in. So we were divided. You had to say like what you estimated your finishing time to be. So I picked the slowest one. So in that category, I came out on the top half of the swim, which I think I really could have done even better than that. Like I think I could have been one of the top in the swim if I hadn't spent about two to three minutes in abject, pure panic. I need to get to the bottom of as to why it is that I panic going into open water because I don't panic when I'm in the pool, but you put me into a lake and all of a sudden I'm just like, I can't do this. And my wetsuit feels like it's way too tight. I was literally trying to undo it in the middle of the lake. Probably a terrible idea. I literally considered swimming back to shore. I was like, I'll die of embarrassment, but at least it's something I'm controlling, not like this lake. Uh, but the rescue boat actually looked closer than the shore. So I was like, okay, I'll just swim to the rescue boat then. And the rescue boat was just beyond like the first turn in the swim. And by the time I got to the, the turn, I was like, I'm totally fine. What am I worried about? And I hit my stride and I just started passing people. 
and I was totally fine. So at least now I know I can literally just swim through the panic. I just need to do it. So it was, it was good at the end of the day. I hated those few minutes, truly, but getting through it really taught me the bigger lesson. So I'm happy about that. Okay. Concealer. This is a new brand at Sephora. This is Kulfi, I believe is how you pronounce it. And this is the shade Ice Ice Berry. Not in love with it. Can't really recommend it, uh, but I've got it. So we're going to use it. I don't really like the applicator. It's really like a flimsy little doe foot. It's not my favorite concealer either. It can start to look a little dry by the end of the day, but as I'm applying it, it's 10 after two in the afternoon. So I really don't have that long to wear it today. So we're just going to go ahead and do it. And at least then I can say that I talked about it on my channel. It's just kind of meh. That's all there is to it. Not the worst, definitely not the best. Okay, back to the triathlon. So then I got out of the lake, got over to transition, didn't really have any issues with that, getting my wetsuit off, getting all geared up for the bike. And then I headed out on the bike and the bike honestly terrifies me. I love my indoor trainer. I have like, I can't remember who it's from. I don't know. I don't remember the brand. Doesn't matter. Anyways, basically turns my bike into a stationary bike and then I have Zwift. And I love it. I miss it so much because currently, we'll get into it, but currently I'm not allowed to do any activity. But I love the indoor bike. I hate riding my bike outside because cars and bumps and scary stuff. Oh, my husband's just coming home from work. I can hear him. I'll have to ask him to be quiet. Anyways, this bike course I had actually driven in advance and it was nice and flat. There were a few little like rolling hills, but nothing major. And I think once I got to like, once I could see the 10K turn, cause it was basically just a 10 kilometer loop. So you go out 10K and then back and there's your full 20K route. Once I could see it, I just had this huge smile on my face because I knew in that moment I'm finishing this. Like I just, I knew that I was going to finish and I knew that I was going to finish strong. Knew I had the run to go, but I knew I was fine. And what was really cool is like once people started turning around, obviously you're passing. So you're heading out to the turn. Other people are coming in and they were just so friendly. People are like, you're doing great. You're almost there. Let's get it. Like everybody's just yelling encouragement to each other. So once I got around that turn and I was passing people heading out to it, I started doing the same as well. The only thing that freaked me out is once I got back into the transition area, there's a gentleman there and he's like, you're doing great, Kara. Good luck on the run. And I'm like, I'm sorry. I can't place you. Do we know each other? I was wearing a freaking race bib with my name on it. It happened like five times. And every time I was like, I'm sorry, I, I don't know who you are. They're reading my name. Dummy. Anyways, then I head off on the run. And the run starts off like the first 500 kilometer, first kilometer, first 500 kilometers, my God, no, first 500 meters, we're on the beach. Running in sand, not easy, not easy at all. So ultimately what I ended up doing was basically I would run like 45 seconds, walk a minute to a minute and a half, and then just keep repeating. I just had a timer going on my watch and I got through it. Like by the end of it, my hip was not pleased but it wasn't like screaming in agony the way it would if I had just like really forced myself to just run as much as possible. And then coming in, which I have to run on the beach again to come to the finish line, but I was by myself and the announcer, I guess they can see like your race bib number. And he's like, here comes Kara Chapman coming down to the end. She's carrying her water. Don't worry, Kara, we got cold drinks for you here. Let's give her a big cheer. And like the crowd is cheering. And so like that just like really carried me over the finish line and I was just like on cloud nine for like four hours after. Then the adrenaline left and I was like, okay, I'm ready for bed. It was like 7.30 at night, but it was just, I was so proud of myself and I'm so excited to do more triathlon next year. I just have to get back into training. I have my eye on doing another sprint distance. I wanna do an Olympic distance, which is twice the length. The big, big, big scary goal is to do a half Ironman next uh, September. I have the one in mind that I want to do. It's just a matter of seeing how far I can get with training. We shall see, but that's the big scary goal, but I know I can do a sprint and I am like 99% certain that I can do an Olympic distance. Maybe if 
about 75% certain on the half Iron Man. We'll see, it's a matter of training. Okay, need to set my face with just, no, before I set it with powder, I'm actually gonna go in with a trio of products here from Nude Sticks. We've got a bronzer in, shade unknown, Bondi Bay, We've got the blush in Picante and a little highlighter in, does it have a, a bubbly babe or bubbly BB? B-E-B-E? -E -E? How the fuck do you pronounce that? Bebe? Bubbly bebe. Let's do, let's do it that way. That just sounds like more fun. Anyways, I'm just going to draw them all on because they don't dry down too fast and then I'll blend from there. So... If you've been keeping up with me on Instagram or on Twitter, aside from all of my political ramblings over there, uh, or even in my community tab over here, you probably have a good idea as to where I've been in the last month, and that has been largely in bed. Uh, I had surgery on September 2nd, and guys, it was a big one. It was a really big operation. So, I'm not going to get too graphic about it. I am going to be doing a bit more of a thorough update on my other channel, showing some like before and after pictures and some healing pictures, things of that sort. So if you're interested in a little bit more detail on what I had done, you can head on over to that channel and I will have an update over there. But for our purposes here, we're just going to sort of talk in broad strokes. So I had... A breast reduction done. I had excess skin removal and liposuction done. I don't know how to describe it, like this area here. So basically instead of the breast reduction cut ending here, it was like extended out to here. And then they did liposuction and removed the excess skin there. And I don't know why I'm so out of breath. And then I had something called a paniculectomy done and that is basically excess skin removal on the stomach. So I had like a big spare tire of excess skin and I've cut that all off and sewn my skin together as well. While they were in there, the surgeon discovered that I had something called diastasis recti, recti. Basically my abs had separated while I was pregnant. So she fixed those as well. So it was sort of like a mini tummy tuck, if you will. They didn't really like contour the abs or anything, but just kind of sewed them back together. I don't think I could ever go through an actual tummy tuck because even just having that small amount of the abs involved in the surgery, <laughs> recovery has been very difficult. So September 2nd, I had that done. Despite how big of a surgery it is, because it took I want to say about five hours for the entire procedure, uh, they send you home that day. Mm. So I woke up in the recovery room. They gave me a banana popsicle, which transported me back to being like nine years old. And it was the most heavenly thing ever. So now we have about 80 banana popsicles in our freezer here at home because they are so good. Anyways, they gave me that. They gave me pain meds. And once they got me over into the actual like recovery bed or area. I'm not, I woke up on one side of the room and then I was on the other. I don't really remember how I got over there, but regardless, that's when it like really started to hit me just what I had done. Like I felt like I had been hit by a truck. It was horrific. And so the surgeon came over and was like, so on a scale of, you know, one to 10, how's your pain? I'm like, like a 7.5. So they gave me more pain meds there. And then the issue became getting me to go pee. I could not get out of bed to do that on the first several attempts. So it took a few hours and then they had to wheel me literally just across the room. Like it maybe would have taken 20 steps at most, but they had to put me in a wheelchair to get me over there because every time I tried to stand up, I would pass out. So. Once we got that under control, they called Barry. Barry came and picked me up. The drive home was just me moaning and holding a pillow onto my stomach, trying to absorb every tiny little bounce in the road. The plan had been that I would basically sleep on our um, 
reclining chair that we have in our living room but as soon as we got home I just beelined it upstairs because I was like I'm not dealing with that shit I, I can't do that so got upstairs and I had about five or six pillows up behind me two or three pillows under my knee so that I'm sitting in basically like that kind of shape like I, I looked like I was in like one of those posturpedic bag beds but like scrunched up like an accordion and that is where I would remain for a few days and I could not do anything for myself literally could not do a thing so anytime I had to go to the bathroom I had to text Barry and he'd have to come up and sort of like basically help pull me up because I couldn't engage any of my muscles to pick myself out of the bed he had to walk me over to the bathroom and then by the time I would finish peeing it would just be like this whooshing sound in my ears and the vision was going dark around the circle like into like a little tiny pinprick and I had just enough time to get back to the bed to kind of just like fall onto it and so he would have to give me like a sponge bath after every time I went to the bathroom because I would just break out in this cold sweat just from the pain of it all and the exertion of it and that lasted I want to say three days until I was like finally able to sort of put my arms behind myself and slowly push myself up, slowly lower myself back down, all of that kind of thing. So not easy. I eventually did get out of the bed and went downstairs after, I want to say five days or so. Um, and then I would sleep on the reclining chair downstairs until like my hips started getting really sore just from the weight of my body, just pressing on like on the backs of my hips and everything. My lower back was sore. It's been hell. It's been absolute hell. Couldn't stand upright. And that's to be expected because they basically like took my skin and just like stretched it. So like a birthmark that used to be up like towards where my boob is, is now like this far away from my belly button. Like that's how much the skin has stretched. Um, not, not fun, really not fun. But every day has gotten a little bit better. I had my first follow-up after, I'd say a, a little bit more than two weeks. So I had it done on Friday. The follow-up was like two weeks and then the Monday. So whatever that works out to be. And this poor surgeon, I walk in and she's like, so how are we doing? And I just burst into tears because <laughs> I was at my breaking point. I wasn't able to sleep. I was still in a lot of pain. Oh, I guess I should show you. I am using the new Spooked palette from Gourmand Girls and I'm going to try to keep it a little bit more on the neutral side. Uh, it is a very, very colorful and fun palette. Right now I'm just going in with this shade here and I'm planning on keeping it very simple because I don't plan on getting out of this shirt and my shorts so I don't need anything like super dramatic going on. But I just wanted to play with this one because it is so pretty and because Christina who owns Gourmand Girls was so nice to send this over to me and this is my first time playing with it so what better time to do it than now anyways back to recovery it was awful I hated it so yes I started crying because I was like I still can't stand upright I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to I feel like everything was done too tight and now I'm going to like rip my muscles if I try to stand up and the skin's never going to stretch and blah, blah, blah. Keeping in mind that I am a very, like, naturally anxious person, so of course I can catastrophize anything, literally anything. I had, like, some little ends of stitches were sticking out, and I'm like, clearly it's going to be a portal for infection. She's like, no, we'll just clip them. Like, it's, it's fine. <laughs> like, oh my god. So she was lovely. I think I might have startled her because I cried so freely <laughs> and so quickly, but she was lovely. She gave me some Tylenol 3, which I had been on something else I don't remember what it was called but it's like stronger than morphine that was fun uh, and I didn't want that I wanted something a little bit lighter anyway so she gave me the Tylenol 3 and bless her soul she uh, prescribed some sleeping medication for me gave me 14 tablets of it was like do not operate a vehicle while you're taking this I'm like fucking don't worry I don't operate myself right now uh, so that made world of difference because I was literally getting like two maybe three hours of disjointed sleep each night like I'd fall asleep then I'd wake up about 45 minutes later and I would spend two and a half three hours just trying to get comfortable I 
wasn't comfortable standing up. I wasn't comfortable lying down. I wasn't comfortable sitting. I would try reclining. I would try leaning forward. I couldn't get on my side yet. I was just miserable and I was like crawling out of my skin with it. And so getting those sleeping pills, which like you don't feel them, you don't feel them, you don't feel them, you're on your ass. Like that's just how they work. Uh, so getting those was an absolute game changer for me. And my healing just kind of took off like a shot from there. So I just now have one little tiny, like, like not even a full centimeter spot over on this side back here that is still not completely healed, but the rest of the incisions are all completely done. I can now stand upright. It's still like, still tight across the stomach, doesn't feel great. And like putting in a full day at work is still very taxing on me. So I'm still getting a lot of rest and still taking it very easy. But I'm doing so much better, so, so much better. I'm able to get out and walk around a little bit now. We went apple picking on the weekend. I managed to do the tractor ride without dying. So <laughs> these are all very encouraging signs. I have another follow-up next week. I'm hoping to get cleared to go back to some level of activity then. If I could get back into the pool, that would be great. But we're probably gonna have to wait for that little spot to completely heal up because I'm not dealing with infection. I refuse, I will not subject myself to that. Um, but if I could get back on my turbo trainer on my bike, even if I'm not allowed to like go hard, that's fine. I just, I need some activity. I'm going crazy. Just sitting on a chair watching TV all day. It sounds like the dream. It is for like the first three days. And then you're like, okay, no, this, I cannot do this anymore. Project that forward five weeks and I'm like going out of my mind. So I have been back to the office. I did have a court matter already, things of that sort, but I just, I miss being active and it's so foreign of a concept to me. And yet here we are. So I know I'm not gonna be able to run for a while and that's okay, but I'm looking forward to the first time I can because now I have boobs that aren't gonna like hit me in the face as I'm running. Amazing concept. Let me tell you, I cannot stop staring at my chest. I can't. I am just so thrilled. I'm so, I know you can't see it in this frame and that's totally fine. It's still a D cup, but they're up like four inches. There's no more loose, saggy skin on them. She even like reconstructed my nips and they look fantastic. You guys are just gonna have to take my word on that. I am just so thrilled. I'm so thrilled and I'm so grateful. And it has been absolute hell, but it's been worth it in my opinion. So that's sort of where I've been. I mean, I don't really have much else, anything else super exciting to talk about because I really haven't done anything else and I really don't have anything on the go right now. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. That's pretty. I wasn't expecting it to be as pink as it is and that. Oh, I've missed makeup. I have. I, you know, I haven't really been keeping up with like the new releases or anything. I see obviously some of them on Instagram and things of that sort. I am itching to get my hands on the new Natasha Denona palette though, because that, mm, it looks so pretty. And the fact that it's been out for a few weeks now and I'm still drooling over it, pretty good indicator to me that I should go ahead and buy that one. I am just waiting though, because I've been off work for ages. I'm self-employed when I don't work, I don't make money. So we've had to prioritize and groceries win out over makeup but that is definitely on my list of purchases to make when I am back financially on my feet. I don't know that I want like the cheek trio or anything like that, but the palette just looks so pretty. And then yesterday I was eyeing the new Huda Beauty palette. I, what are your thoughts on that? Because for me, it looks very similar to other palettes that she has, but she really does love her pinky kind of purples. She really loves those, and I'd love to see her branch out from it. I mean, it's very pretty, but if I had to choose between that and the Natasha Denona one, I'm gonna go ND all the way. I really wish Huda would stop putting pictures of her eyeballs as her packaging. I 
I've been saying that for a long time and she just doesn't listen to me. It's just, it's so off-putting. It truly is. I mean, I can get past it if the palette itself is pretty enough to make me want to buy it, but like, it is wholly unnecessary. Okay. That is pretty. That is very pretty. Uh, I'm going to go in with this deeper purple here and try not to go overboard with it. This is a risky move. This is always a risky move, but I'm just going to go very light-handed. And I don't know what else to talk about now, to be honest. I really don't know. There has not been anything particularly exciting going on in my life, aside from changes to my body, <laughs> which is really just only exciting for me, potentially for Barry as well, but more so for me. But I have to say, speaking of Barry, I am just so grateful for his support. I mean, when I say I was 100% reliant on him, I was 100% reliant on him. Like, if I dropped the charge cord for my phone, I couldn't pick it up. If I dropped my phone, I couldn't pick it up. I couldn't get myself to the bathroom. He still helps me immensely, but he has to, like, set up my shower for me. And showering is a whole new situation as well, because I sit with a camping chair, because standing in hot water, washing the hair, doing the thing, I just, I get too lightheaded and then I'm afraid I'm gonna fall and so we just put a camping chair into the shower and I sit on that and he brings the like handheld shower head thing down so that I can just like hold it and do my thing. Um, but the first couple times I showered we hadn't figured that out so he's like trying to help me wash my hair and hold me up and I'm like leaning against the wall and it was, just, it was awful. It was such a big production. But um, I'm just, I'm so grateful for him. He basically gained another child in the process because I was so helpless. But between him and the two kids, like Aspen has been running herself ragged trying to help me. I'm like, baby, just be a kid. You're fine. I'm fine. We're fine. And she's like, no, I need to get you medicine. She like set up all of my meds in like a little container so that I could take my antibiotics when I needed to and my pain meds and all this. And she's been such a little mother hen and it's been so wonderful. Okay, I finished my eyes off camera. I didn't bother lining the lower waterline because I just can't be bothered today. For upper lash line, I use this one here from Benefit. This is the Extreme Precision Liner in brown. For my brows, I use this Kosas one, the Air Brow in dark brown. Honestly, not my favorite. Definitely wouldn't repurchase. Just doesn't have enough hold for me. So I'm using it because I have it, but I don't love it. Bite Beauty Upswing Mascara for the win. So sad we can't get our hands on it anymore, but it is what it is. And then for lips, I'm going to go in with Rare Beauty. This is one of the lipsticks in the shade Worthy. I really enjoy these. Like, I really enjoy these. So, I don't remember where I left off. I think I was just saying that Aspen's like a huge help for me. And that basically summarizes where I've been in the last five weeks. I don't know that I'm ready to commit. Well, you know what? I know 100% that I'm not ready to commit to any sort of schedule because anytime I do, life just comes along and laughs at me. So if you're looking for somebody who has like a regimented schedule of uploads, not your girl. Sorry to say it is what it is. There you have it. Uh, but I have missed filming. I've missed just playing with makeup and creating and just having fun. And I've got some palettes that I've received in PR that I'm very excited to play with, particularly this one as well. I mean, I've only used a few shades of it today and it's applying beautifully. The shimmers are just so gorgeous. Unfortunately, I think this one is currently sold out. I do hope that they restock it. If I find out that they will, I will let you guys know in a community post, but it's absolutely beautiful. Happy with this one, uh, but I, I'm just trying to balance a lot of things right now and once I do get the okay to go back to activity that's going to be one more factor to can, like to take into consideration. I have this channel, I have my other channel, and then I have three different sports that I'm trying to train for so that I can achieve these big goals that I've set for myself for next year. And while next year sounds a very far way away, if I'm to do a half Ironman, just for context of what that means, that's a, what is it, a 1500 kilometer, 15, why do I keep saying things like that? 1500 meter, I think is what it is. No, I think it's a two kilometer swim. 
holy shit, I should know this. I do know this. I'm just gapping right now. Two kilometer swim, 90 kilometer bike ride, and a half marathon, 21 kilometers. So it's gonna take a long time to build up the endurance for all three of those, let alone doing all three of those in one day. So I am really hoping that come November, I will be cleared for all three sports and then we will establish a plan from there. But I'm so excited to get back into it. I really love it. Like I really love it. It's not even like, it's not even about being competitive. It's being about, it's about being competitive with myself. So next year when I do a sprint distance, I'm really excited to see how I do then compared to how I did this summer. The mindset, just overcoming those challenges, swimming through the panic, things like that. Like I'm just, I'm so proud that I'm able to do that. And I'm so, like I just feel so fulfilled by it. So that's why I have been spending so much time dedicated to that. And I intend to do so going forward. That's not to say that I'm gonna neglect this channel. It's just, I have to balance everything. So I'm hoping like one video a week at an absolute minimum, aiming for two, but it might take me a little while to get back up to that because like I said, I'm gassed after like walking up a set of stairs right now. So I'm really paying attention to my body, really listening to the demands of recovery because this has been the hardest thing I have ever, ever done physically, ever. It's been, it's been awful. It's been awful. So now that I'm starting to finally feel better, I still really have to pay attention because it's very easy to push myself too hard and then I'm just setting myself back days in my recovery. So there we have it. I'm making no promises. There it is, that, that's the gist of it. So at any rate, that is gonna wrap it up for today. Thank you for all of your patience. Thank you for sticking around and waiting for me. Thank you for all of your encouragement and really kind comments on Instagram, on my community post, for reaching out, letting me know that you're thinking of me and sending me well wishes. You have no idea how much that has helped in this past month. Like it's been an incredible source of strength for me. So thank you so much. I look forward to producing some more videos for you guys soon, really getting back into the swing of things, engaging with you and just, Moving forward from this dark moment in my life, it's all worthwhile in the end. But at any rate, thank you so much for taking the time to watch. I will see you in my next video. And until then, just be a decent human being. Bye for now.